The For Our Business, For Our Planet Award Program recognizes Castro Valley businesses that go beyond recycling and make green practices stand. Since 2011, the participating For Our Star businesses have been receiving the publicity and awards they deserve, and now their employees can receive recognition as well. Hey there, Castro Valley. It's your resident restaurant chef reviewer, Igor Brayman. I'm here at Wen's Cafe, located right across Castro Valley Village on Santa Maria and Castro Valley Boulevard, here for some fantastic Vietnamese American eats. So, let's see what the menu holds for us. So I'm thinking of getting three things today. I do definitely want to start with a beverage, and I'm thinking either Vietnamese coffee or Thai iced tea. Those are very traditional and actually very delicious that I think most of us may not be familiar with. I'm definitely gonna get our fresh spring rolls with prawns. Now fresh spring rolls are actually made of rice paper which has been soaked in water and then rolled. So you get this almost chewy texture as you bite into something fresh. Very different from a traditional egg roll that we think of where they're rolled and fried. Now you can do that with fresh spring rolls and then they'd be fried, but it's a completely different, different dish. And then I also think I'm going to try some Vietnamese noodle soup, also known as pho. Pho can be made with chicken, made with beef, made with a variety of other things, but it's a really nice way to embrace Vietnamese culture. So this right here is our Vietnamese iced coffee. What happens is it actually drips through right here. They pour hot water through that coffee filter. As it drips, it drips into sweetened condensed milk. So you've got this really nice dairy product that has a lot of sweetness. Once this is fully in there, I'm gonna mix it together and then pour it into my ice glass. So you end up with this nice, super concentrated, really nicely sweet Vietnamese iced coffee. Here you go, this is the appetizer. Thank you very much. Alright, so first we're going to start with our fresh spring rolls. Now what's really awesome about these, which is very traditional, is you want to display whatever your main ingredient is on the outside, your special starred ingredient. For example, here is a prawn or a shrimp fresh spring roll. Now once again, this is a rice paper that's been soaked in water, fresh ingredients stuffed in there, and then lightly rolled. Now first, before we go into this, let's try our peanut dipping sauce, which is usually what you dip in. Mm, very nice. So it's nice balance of sweetness, umami, which means savory, a little spicy, and a little sour. Finally finishing it with this light bitter from the roasty of the peanuts. Very traditional in Asian cuisine to balance all five tastes. So I think that's a great sauce to try. Let's see how our fresh spring roll is. It's a great way to start a meal. You have a little of the vermicelli in there, the noodles, carrots, pardon me, carrots, a little bit of the green lettuce, and the freshness and the sweetness of the nice prawn, not overcooked. So a great way to start a meal, especially if you haven't tried it before. Nothing too weird and unfamiliar here. Furthermore, what I really like about these is that they include a little vermicelli noodles inside. Some that I've had before have been all lettuce, and those I haven't been too much of a fan of. But now let's move on to our fried spring rolls, see how that is. Just like we did with our peanut sauce, let's try our sweet and sour dipping sauce first. Ooh, definitely packs a little bit more of a punch and a nice balance between sweet and sour. Really good to balance out our fried fattiness of that egg roll, that spring roll. So let's try that as well. So what makes this different than our Chinese egg roll cousin is that rather than dominance of veggies, usually cabbage and the egg roll, here's a dominance of meat, usually ground pork or ground beef or a blend of something like that with a little bit of carrot. So you get a really nice meaty fatty bite to balance out that sweet, sour, salty dipping sauce here. Now, like I mentioned before, sometimes they actually use these rice wrappers and then fry them to create this crisp texture. But oftentimes this is actually a wheat wrapper, very similar to egg rolls, to give us that nice crunch without any big bubbles forming. Alright, so now we're about to dig into our pho bo tai chin. 
Pho, meaning Vietnamese noodle soup, bo, meaning beef, and Thai and chin are the two cuts of beef that I put in here. Thai is a very thinly cut eye round steak. It's actually placed in here raw, and the heat of the soup cooks it very gently. That is usually the most favorite, most approachable cut of meat that you can get inside a beef noodle soup. The other one that I got was chin, which is a very well cooked brisket. That way you have a little bit of the um, toughness of the fresh steak and the tenderness of that brisket. Now, pho being a noodle soup, is uh, traditionally served with different condiments and different toppings. Here we have some Thai basil. Thai basil is very different than usual European or Italian basil. This one's actually a little more peppery rather than European basil, which is more sweet and anise licorice-y. We have some bean sprouts. When these we enter in the soup, give us a little bit of added crunch. A little bit of jalapeno as well to add some spice to it, and some lime. Similarly, how we talked about the peanut sauce, balancing the salty, sour, bitter, umami, and sweet, pho is a perfect um, example of that. Now, how the broth made, that is the most important part of pho. The broth is generally taking pork or beef bones and simmering them for 12, 16, 18 hours to really extract a lot of flavor, along with flavors of fish sauce, palm sugar, star anise, and sometimes onion and ginger. Now, fish sauce is this weird condiment that we're gonna be adding today. It's made of fermented fish. Often it smells and tastes pretty bold, but in this part of the world, this is actually used instead of soy sauce. This would be like the Vietnamese soy sauce. Once it's cooked in a soup, it does not smell as much. So a lot of explanation about pho, but now I think we're ready to try it. Before I add any toppings, the most important part here is to actually taste the broth. Oh wow, I'm actually very surprised. Now I've had pho 20, 30 times, and then this is actually a very nicely seasoned broth. It has a good amount of salt, a good amount of that star anise, and a very nice gelatinous flavor of the pork or beef bone. Now, um, pork or beef bones have a lot of elastin, collagen, gelatin, calcium, great minerals for use. This is actually a very healthy soup. All right, now we're finally ready to add a few flavors into my pho. Now, I already tasted the broth. It's a nice base flavor, but I do want to add a little bit more oomph. Um. I'm going to start with some hoisin sauce. Now, hoisin sauce is this dark, reduced, sugary sauce that has star anise in it. So if you want to bump up that star anise, almost licorice-y flavor, add a little bit of this into your sauce. Now there was recently a video going around with a non-Vietnamese restaurant chef that was talking about pho. And he says, you need to add in all your seasonings before you even taste the broth, because that's the proper way to eat pho. There's no proper way, but I would really like to say, taste the broth first, adjust your seasonings after. Don't do a disservice to the soup by throwing a bunch of things in it without even tasting it. So there's my hoisin. To add a little spice, I have a choice of either sriracha or chili oil. Today I'm gonna use chili oil. Now a lot of Americans are actually fearful of the chili oil as it's been sitting out. It could be contaminated, it could be germy. Look, if you were a germ, you would not survive in this spicy, oily mixture. So you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Similar with open containers of salt. If you have an open container of salt, if anything was to fly in there, it would be instantly dead because of such a high quantity of salt. And finally, I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of peppers. Now these have been pickled lightly. They look like almost like a pepperoncini type of pepper, but very fresh. I'm gonna add these in there finally. After our liquid-ish toppings, we'll call them, we'll finally add our solider toppings. I love bean sprouts because they give me a crunch in my fuck. A little jalapeno, as it's gonna add a little spice when I bite into it. Of course, some Thai basil. This is some of my favorite basil to work with. Whole leaves go right in. Don't worry about that, because all the heat from the broth is gonna be able to wilt that down. And finally, a little bit of lime. Very traditional to have that lime balance out that saltiness. So you have salty, sweet, sour, umami, and bitter once again. Finally, we dunk everything in. I'm really happy. I love spice, so I added just the right amount of spice. Well, the saltiness, the sweetness, the sourness, it's perfect. Now let's say you want it a little more sour, and this one wedge of lime is not enough for you. Very easy to ask, they're very nice here. I'm very impressed with the service as well. If I needed fish sauce, I could ask for it, more lime. Anything I really want, I could ask for it. Fuzz one of those dishes where you assemble as you go, taste the change, uh, change the taste as you go. Let's try our well cut, uh, thin cut uh, eye round steak. Mm. Really nicely thinly cut. That's the main goal here. You don't want a big piece that's gonna be chewy. So really nice. Finally, let's try that brisket. Let's find a piece in here. 
So I finally found a piece. It's so tender that it was hard to find as it would li nicely really shred itself in my bowl. Let's see. Mm. Really reminds me of even my grandma's cooking. Cooking meat till it falls off the bone really nice. I'm very impressed with this pho, especially for the price. Now this place even has a great pickup options. Feel free to give them a call. You can get bowls of pho to go along with spring rolls, anything that you would like to go as well. Now finally, after trying this delicious pho, which I'm gonna have to wait a little bit to finish off, I think we should sample our Vietnamese iced coffee, see how that turned out. All right, so our Vietnamese iced coffee is ready. I'm gonna take this part right off of my coffee cup, place it on my plate. I'm gonna remove my spoon with the ice, stir that sweet and condensed milk, and leaving a few of the marbles, and then pour this right into my ice. Make a little mess while you're at it, but that's all the fun of it. And this is your beautiful Vietnamese iced coffee. You have that really nice milky cream color for them sweet and condensed milk. Super powerful Vietnamese coffee here. Mm. And the nice chill. Now, what I actually like about this, their proportion to sweet and condensed milk to coffee is not too sweet. It's actually a really nice approachable point. If you want it sweeter, you could always add a little sugar, which they supply for you. If anyone's ever had a red eye coffee, which is a shot of espresso into a cup of coffee, this is gonna be very similar what the end result will be. Delicious, and gonna power you through after lunch once you've finished all this delicious food. So I've had pho maybe 20, 20 different places or so, and I'm really impressed with this one. A really nice amount of seasoning. I really get the nice gelatinous mouthfeel from all the bones. Um, do you use pork bones or beef bones in your beef bone? Beef so bones. I cook the beef bone 14 hours. 14 hours. Like I was mentioning, Sydney. it's not not a quick cook. Yeah. It takes overnight, it's overnight. the most times. We usually start from uh, 7 until 9, 7 p.m. until 9 a.m. Wow. I get all the broth and I make the broth. That, that's what really makes this worth your money. A lot of the times when it comes to food, you pay for time. Here you're paying for a lot of time and a lot of care put into this. You know you know when a chef really loves his soup? When he puts that much time in. And uh, not only the corn, we cook with a lot of onions, ginger, garlic, black pepper, mm -hmm. and um, the red onions. Ooh, red onions as well, yeah. great. Yeah. So, uh, and also in the broth, we also mix with the broth when we cook the brisket. So we combine them all together nice. with a very, very nice ratio. Nice, nothing is wasted. All the meat juices, all the deliciousness. Thank you once again, Chef. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The For Our Business, For Our Planet Award Program recognizes Castro Valley businesses that go beyond recycling and make green practices stand. Since 2011, the participating For Our Star businesses have been receiving the publicity and awards they deserve. And now their employees can receive recognition as well.